Hey guys, fan cooled sled versus liquid cooled sled. Two different cooling systems, distinct advantages and disadvantages to each. Comparing one to the other, which one's better? Let's break it down. Oh, helmet head. Hey there, snowmobilers. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is David Clark. I'm just a guy who likes to talk about old sleds. If you're the same, take a second, subscribe to the channel, click that little bell icon, you'll get notified when I post a new video. Today's video is in response to Carson XD. Carson suggested a video on liquid cooled versus fan cooled sleds. So Carson, here you go. All right, so what the heck are we talking about? We're talking about cooling systems. So there's basically two types of cooling systems on sleds. Basically two types, but there are tons of variations in design. When you burn gasoline inside of an engine, you create heat. The faster you run that sled, the more heat you create. Now some heat will just radiate off the motor into the air, but not enough. So what you can do, you can increase the surface area that's interacting with the air by adding cooling fins to the motor. If you've got a small motor like your lawnmower or like this little tiny baby Polaris Assault 120, that motor's small enough it doesn't generate very much heat. So those cooling fins alone or a direct air cooling system are enough. And if you have a look at the flywheel on a motor like this, it also has fins for additional airflow. Now, as motors get a little bit bigger like this Citation 250, cooling fins alone may not be enough to cool it. Now you can only add so many more cooling fins, but you can add more air. And the way you do that is you slap a fan on the side of the motor. With a forced air convection cooling system like this Citation, you add a fan to the side of the motor. That fan is turned by a belt that runs off a pulley down near the crankshaft. The faster the motor turns, the faster the fan turns. That fan is going to draw in cool air and direct it through a shroud across the cooling fins on the top of the motor. Now a nice benefit with the Citation is it then blows warm air out through vents in the hood behind the windshield and directs it onto the rider. So it's a very simple, very effective way to cool an engine. And it cooled a lot of sleds for a lot of years, but it has its limitations, particularly when you get larger motors generating more heat. But as sleds and motors got bigger and more high performance, you needed something with a little more oomph to cool them off. And that's why in the mid 1970s, liquid cooled sleds appeared in the market. Liquid cooling allowed manufacturers to make bigger, more high performance engines and snowmobiles because it more effectively removes heat from the engine. So both of my sleds are liquid cooled, basically the same system with a few differences. It's a lot harder to see on this rev, so let's go look at the 97. So most of these systems are gonna be pretty similar. You can have a reservoir for coolant. At the bottom of the reservoir, you've got a line down here that goes into your motor. It goes to the water pump in the front of the crankcase down below that Y pipe. And it gets pumped through the motor and ends up here. So the thermostat is in behind this fitting here. The point of the thermostat is to let your engine warm up quicker. When the motor's cold, that thermostat is closed and the radiator circuit is bypassed. Coolant comes through here. Once it hits 42 degrees, what's that, 108? Uh, then the thermostat will open. Coolant will flow through this line back to your heat exchanger. Heat exchanger is kind of like a radiator except instead of just radiating heat it also gets cooled down by the snow and ice and water that gets thrown up by your track. This sled has two heat exchangers under the seat. Some sleds may have one. Some sleds they may be under the running boards. So that coolant flows through the heat exchangers where it gets cooled off and then it circulates back into the engine. On this rev chassis I have one large heat exchanger under the seat and then I have a second one up at the front of the tunnel in front of the track. By circulating liquid coolant through the actual cylinders and cylinder heads, directing it away from the motor through a heat exchanger, you could remove more heat and keep a more consistent temperature in the engine. So hands down a liquid cooled system is better at removing heat from an engine. But does that mean that a liquid cooled sled is a better sled than a fan cooled sled? So let's break it down into categories. So let's start with performance, right? So torque, compression, top end speed, overall what's a higher performing sled? The liquid cooled sled has the advantage here. And not just because large high performing engines tend to be liquid cooled. If you take two sleds with the same size motor, one's fan cooled, one's liquid cooled, and you run them against each other, all things being equal, the liquid cooled sled is gonna have the advantage. With a fan cooled sled, as it heats up, eventually you'll lose performance. It'll start to bog down. As that engine gets hot, and those parts start to expand, you'll lose performance. So definitely an edge to the liquid cooled sled. Affordability, both in terms of maintenance costs and purchase price, edge goes to the fan cooled system. So because a fan cooled system is so simple and there are fewer moving parts, fan cooled sleds tend to be cheaper sleds. Then again, I'm not sure that that translates directly into the older used market. Maintenance and repairs. So which system is going to break down more and you're going to spend more time fixing and maintaining? 
Advantage there obviously goes to the fan because it's such a simple system. So areas of failure on a fan-cooled sled, you've got the belt that can wear out or break. Uh, you've got bearings that can go in the fan. Your hood vents can get plugged with snow when you're not getting enough airflow under the hood. Not really a whole lot of things can go wrong with a fan-cooled system. So in terms of overall complexity and number of points of failure, the liquid-cooled sled does lag behind a little bit. But realistically, your thermostat and your water pump don't fail very often. It's more often you get things like leaky gaskets and hose connections and things like that. One of the big vulnerabilities in a liquid-cooled sled is the heat exchanger. You know, if you have a studded track and you have a stud tear through, it can damage the heat exchanger. You throw a rock up under there, it can damage it. It can either pierce it and you have coolant leaking out, or it can just damage the fins and then it doesn't cool as efficiently. Anything that gets stuck under there, even a tree branch that gets pulled up in there, can damage your heat exchangers. In terms of routine maintenance, there's not a ton of work to do with either sled. With a fan-cooled sled, obviously you want to inspect that belt for wear and tension. With a liquid-cooled sled, there's two things. You want to keep an eye on the level in the reservoir. I would do that every time you ride because it only takes you a second and it saves you overheating. The other item with a liquid cooled sled is periodically changing the coolant. So like anything it breaks down so your manufacturer will recommend every year every two years you drain that system and refill it. I suspect a lot of guys don't change their coolant that frequently. All I can do is suggest you follow your manufacturer's recommendation. For repair and maintenance, advantage to fan. Because a fan-cooled sled doesn't rely on snow and ice being thrown onto the heat exchanger by the track, they tend to do better in low snow conditions like road running or riding on ice. And they also do better at long periods at idle or low speed running, making them a good choice for a utility sled. A utility sled is a little bit of a different animal because it kind of depends where you are and what you use it for. The fan cooled option may be good for a utility sled because you don't have to worry about snow conditions. If you got to work, you got to work. Um, or if you're going out to the ice hut and you're running on ice, you don't need to worry about a heat exchanger. But as a friend just reminded me, some of the utility sleds have really wide tracks. So if you're turning a wide track or if you're towing something, you may need a sled with a little bit more power. That's why there's some variation in cooling systems on utility sleds. Some of them are going to be liquid cooled, some are going to be fan cooled, and some will have a rad with a fan on them like your car. Liquid sled is also susceptible to something called cold seas. Now this happens because as we know, cold causes shrinkage. Probably not a good way to put that. Cold causes metal to contract. Cold seas happens when you ride a sled without properly warming it up. So you come out on a super cold day, you start the sled, the thermostat is closed at this point, you just take off. You put that throttle to the bar, you are flying across the field having a good old time. And now your thermostat opens and all that cold liquid flows in around your cylinders and now you got pistons in there that are expanding faster than the cylinders around them. Now if you own a two-stroke snowmobile, almost everything containing the word seize is a bad thing. Always take the time to warm your sled up properly before you ride. If you have a look in your owner's manual, you'll probably find a warm-up procedure. So with both my sleds, I'll put them up on the stand, I'll start them, let them run for two to three minutes, give them a little bit of throttle, let the track move, just give things a chance to warm up before I ride. Durability or engine life. How long is it going to be before you have to rebuild that motor? There's a lot of things that go into that. So if your username is ride fast or die, your sled is probably not going to last as long as Senior Trail Rider 32. But if Senior Trail Rider didn't maintain his sled, that has an effect as well. But all things being equal, in a general sense, a liquid-cooled sled has a longer engine life. That's because liquid cooling provides a more consistent operating temperature. With a fan-cooled sled, all that heating up and cooling down adds to wear and tear on the motor. And it's a good thing the liquid-cooled engine does last longer because if you have to tear it down, and rebuild it obviously with a liquid cooled sled you have to drain it and refill it and you may have additional gaskets so it's a little bit more work and a little bit more expense to rebuild overall weight is another area where a fan cooled sled comes out ahead so you don't have all those moving parts you don't have coolant in the system you don't have heat exchangers under your seat so a fan cooled sled tends to be a little bit lighter if you're a smaller rider you're looking for a lighter sled that's easier to move around a fan cooled sled might be something to look at so overall which sled is better the liquid cooled or the fan cooled well, I'm going to leave that up to you. So it really depends on how you ride and what you're looking for. If you want a performance sled that you can ride fast and put the throttle down and not worry about it overheating, then a liquid-cooled sled is probably the way to go. If top-end speed and high performance is not a consideration for you, there's a lot of solid, reliable fan-cooled sleds out there. So if you're just looking for something to go out to the ice hut or work around the farm, a fan-cooled sled might be a good choice for you. Lower maintenance, less things to fix, and you don't have to worry as much about low snow conditions. So let's have a conversation. What do you guys think? If you own fan-cooled sleds, liquid-cooled sleds, which one do you think is better and why? Post something in the comments. All right, guys, so that's liquid-cooled versus fan-cooled. I hope you liked that or found it interesting. If you did, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. So I think that's a wrap for another video. So until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch.
I'm picking this up, Robin. My suspension, it's the uh, plow on my ATV I keep winging in the spring. I think it's liquid cooled is the way to go. And for me, I'm only going to buy liquid cooled. <sighs> the overall weight of the sled is another area where a fan cooled tet. <sighs> Fan cooled sleds tend to get a bit of an it. <clears throat> and if you look at the flywheel on a motor like this, you'll usually fin. And if you have a look at the flywheel on a motor like this, it also 